playground standards draw the attention of manufacturers and operators to the need of greater care when installing one post equipment, which is defined as structurally vulnerable equipment where the failure of one cross section, either at the foundation or elsewhere in the support post, would be catastrophic. This includes not only single post equipment, but also structures where stability is provided by two or a row of, of legs. Fatal accidents have happened in the last few years in different European countries due to the collapse of one post equipment. These accidents have been associated to different or combined scenarios involving uh, initial choice of the equipment material, like inadequate class of timber, uh, installation, construction of foundations or the drainage, leading to accelerated rotting or corrosion, or inadequate anchorage. Uh, heavy movement and dynamic loading without adequate frequency of inspection and maintenance or due to the choice of impact attenuating materials not allowing for correct inspection of foundations or due to lack of inspection or maintenance. In this example, this is a, this is a two-legged swing in a school. During a training session for operational inspectors and maintenance staff where participants had to use the equipment, excessive wobbling of the post was detected. After maintenance, stability was restored. As you can see, there is much less wobbling. When choosing one post equipment, designers should be aware of the higher risks and take the requirements and recommendations for risk reduction seriously. The playground standard clearly requires that foundations of one post equipment shall be accessible for periodic inspection. Furthermore, suppliers of one post equipment are required to provide specific instructions for maintenance, including a statement about the need to increase frequency of inspection and maintenance. The standard recommends careful planning in the choice and installation of impact attenuating surfacing if access to the foundation is required for inspection. As an example, it states that if poured in place synthetic surfaces are used, they may have to be cut back and relayed. The inherent associated costs are implicit. The standard also recommends additional measures for structural integrity and stability of one post equipment in terms of construction, as it should be carried out in a way that minimize rotting or corrosion in parts relevant for stability, allows for controlling degradation and the need for decommission, and that so that it can be used without collapse within the foreseen inspection period when maintained correctly. It also states that during operational and annual main inspection, special attention should be given to one post equipment. Choosing one post equipment risk-benefit assessment is recommended. Apart from the higher risks posed by one post equipment, the need for more frequent technical inspections and possibly more maintenance may also increase the potential cost for operators. Before opting for this type of equipment, a thorough risk-benefit assessment should be implemented. For carousels and other rotating equipment, where rotating is part of the fun and adds play value, one post equipment with a central axis is hard to avoid or the rotating function would not be achieved. A careful inspection plan and maintenance program should be developed and implemented as part of risk management. For non-rotating equipment or where the rotating function does not exist and the central axis or another single post is not necessary for the function or play value, Designers may opt for a solution where the risk of stability failure is lower. The same applies for equipment with legs in a row, either for swings or other equipment. There are many other framework designs that allow for greater stability and are less demanding in terms of inspection and maintenance. So, when one post equipment is not necessary for the play function and has no added play value, when it is purely a design or aesthetics choice, the responsibility of the decision 
lies on the designer or commissioner and should be taken with great awareness of the risks. The operator, school manager, city council will have to deal with the consequences. He should be informed about the risks and be aware of implications for risk management. Choices of activities and equipment at design stage and their layout, siting or placement will have an important impact on risk management as some aspects cannot be changed at a later stage by operators in the post-occupancy period.